welcome back to the channel, I'm Reg Local. I do a little video today about observations and planning. Sort of key building block of uh, advanced motorcycling and advanced driving. Before I get into the video I should mention that um, I think the roads are quiet today. We're in uh, the Wednesday following the government's lockdown. Um, which has restricted opportunities to go out and do filming uh, quite significantly. However, I work in um, what's classed as a key role. I head up the homelessness team, amongst other things, for local authority. So obviously looking after homeless people, people who are rough sleeping, is extremely important at the moment. I'm trying to find ways to get them to self-isolate. So there are occasions when I need to uh, drive or ride into work. So any of the filming that I do over the next few months whilst this sort of lockdown is in place will be done just on my journey to and from work. I might vary the journey a little bit to suit, but I can't justify going out for a ride just for the sake of it. So you will notice that the roads are significantly quieter than they normally are. The Air Trouble 6 out of Bolton. It's not normally like this any time of the day. But today we're going to look at observations and planning. So, as an examiner, an advanced examiner, one of the first things that I'm looking for from somebody who is uh, taking an advanced bike test or a car test is the ability to plan very important that we make riding and driving plans as we're moving along the road. So most of the drivers that we see out here are ones around us who haven't had the benefit of any kind of additional training. A lot of them tend to drive along or ride along and then arrive at something and then get caught out by surprise by that thing and then decide what they're going to do at the last minute. Whereas as advanced or better drivers and riders, we want to be making plans as we're driving along. So I'm forming a plan now as to how I'm going to negotiate this roundabout. I'm taking the first exit left, checking the mirrors for information, and I'm looking to the right nice and early to see if there's a gap in traffic. I've got the car and the van coming round, so I'm slowing down on the speed phase, just taking an appropriate gear now, slotting in behind the van, and you can see I've made that plan on the approach to the roundabout and then put it into place. So observations, what's the skill with observations? Well a lot of people tell me when they come for a day's driver training or whatever that I seem to look an awfully long way into the distance. Um, and it's true, we do want to look as far down the road as we possibly can. But we want to do it with good reason. And that reason is to help us form those driving or riding plans as we're moving along the road. So looking up ahead now, I can see there's a row of parked cars on the near side. This Mercedes is going to want to move out for them. So I'm dropping back and allowing him to move out. So let's start with observations and scanning. So scanning is the ability to look in the, in the whole picture. To, it's, it's described as a continual visual sweep of the whole environment. Uh, well, what that means in basic terms is that your eyes should be all over the place, seeking out the things which may develop into hazards. So one of the biggest advantages of being an advanced or a better driver or rider is that we don't get caught out by surprise. We don't end up relying on our reactions to deal with issues. We arrive at situations with a clear plan what we're going to do and we don't end up relying on our reactions. So in order to do that we need a bit of a pattern, a bit of a, a sort of routine as to how we look down the road. And the way that I do it is that I start in the very far distance and work my way back. So we start with far distance, then we go to middle distance, then the foreground, then the sides if necessary, and then the rear, which on the bike is a mirror check and a shoulder check if we think it's necessary. So 
So I want you to imagine a, a tank track or a caterpillar track on a piece of earth moving equipment and imagine just one segment of that caterpillar track and imagine how that single segment moves. When it's on the top of the track it goes all the way forward to the front and then when it's at the bottom it works its way back and then once it's got to the back it's all the way forward again. And that essentially is how we carry out our observations. So here for instance I'm looking in the far distance at the road bending round to the left and the works vehicle with the orange flashing light on the offside. In the middle distance I've got the pub on the right and the pedestrians on the near side. In the foreground I've got the sort of defects and potholes on the road surface that I'm looking at. Nothing really at the sides but a mirror check reveals following traffic but nothing too close that's going to cause us a problem at the moment. Then back in the far distance. So by the time I've done that and got back to the far distance we're alongside the works van with the flashing orange light. And the observations are back in the far distance again. And it's like there's a breakdown or a vehicle on the offside with another orange flashing light on it. Road bending to the left, roadworks signs. In the middle distance, the garage forecourt. And in the short distance, in the, in, in the foreground, whatever road surface defects we've got. And then following traffic in the mirrors. In the far distance, road bending to the right. In the middle distance, zebra crossing. So I'm rolling off the gas, checking the mirrors. and then back in the far distance again at the road bending round to the right. So that's the routine. Far distance, mid distance, foreground, sides, rear. Back to the far distance again. Um, one thing I would say is you don't necessarily need to rigidly stick to that. If you're too rigid with that, there is a possibility that at the point where you're looking in the far distance, something happens right in the foreground that you immediately need to deal with. So although I'm looking in the far distance now at the green traffic lights in the distance, I'm also aware of what is emerging in these junctions, what's happening underneath these parked cars on the left hand side, um, whether anybody's coming out of any of these driveways or anything like that. But as a, as a basic rule, rule of thumb, I, thought I, I like to avoid rules, but as a rule of thumb, far distance, mid distance, foreground, sides and rear, back to the far distance again. So let's put that into practice now. Uh, and we'll do it on a series of different roads during this journey. We're starting with, obviously, urban roads on the A666, generally towards the A6 and then the centre of Manchester. We'll sort of go through the middle of Manchester on my way to work today. So I'll be able to share with you my observations, the sort of things that I'm looking at, the sort of potential hazards that I'm trying to spot. So. We used to separate uh, hazards into potential and actual hazards. You could call that developing or actual hazards, however you want to use the terminology. Obviously, the actual hazards, the things that are happening, the things that I'm going to have to do something about, they're the most important ones. But all the time I've got a secondary eye on those potential hazards, the developing hazards, the things that might turn into something that I'm going to have to do something about. So that means I'm constantly making observation links as well. So there's a van parked on the offside there. I'm looking for the person associated with it, the driver. It's parked up with the hazards on. I'm looking for somebody who might be across the road making a delivery. Could be this chap at the cash machine here. The green lights could change to red. Immediately they do. We check the mirrors and come down to a nice smooth stop. Once the lights turn to green, just because they're on green, doesn't mean that there won't be vehicles coming through. Emergency service vehicles for instance, so I've always got that at the back of my mind. Down in the distance now, park cars on either side of the road, green traffic lights on the crossing, van emerging from the near side, quick mirror, quick mirror and shoulder check before we move out for these park cars. And there's a bus stopped in a bus stop, so I'm going to stay out. Got following traffic but they're not a problem. Eyes in the distance again, they're all bending around to the right, the tipper truck there. I'm looking for anybody who might be getting off this bus. I'm looking underneath for movements of feet, keeping well away, checking in front of it. Staying out again for this parked car on the near side, checking out the pedestrians, then eyes in the far distance again. Got the truck going round to the left. We've got an end to this double lane section here. Just slot back in, somebody in the road, checking the mirrors and just easing off the gas moving away from them very slightly. 
Eyes in the distance now, the road's bending round to the right. We've got some parked cars on both sides of the road. Headlights have just gone off on the offside and somebody's got out of a car, so I'm looking for them stepping into the road. So you can see there where I'm seeing one thing and making a link with what might happen next. Car stops, lights go off, the next thing that happens is a door opens and people step into the road. So I'm looking out for that. I suppose the good thing about this lockdown situation and the lack of traffic on the road is it gives me a little bit more time to focus on things. Imagine if this is really busy and we're in a huge line of traffic going along here, there's so much happening it's very difficult to pick out the hazards that are of real relevance to us. But at the moment this is giving us plenty of time to look down the road work out what the issues are and talk about them. There's somebody stepping out from the near side here, I'm just moving away before he steps into the road, boot of his car's open. In the distance the road's bending round to the right, in the mid distance somebody's just got into this car, it might set off, I'm moving well away from it. And then we've got somebody waiting in a bus stop. Sort of hints that the bus might be behind us rather than in front of us, but I know we're on a reduced bus service at the moment, because of the virus situation. Checking the mirrors before I roll off the gas, Slowing it down, a little bit of a tip here, don't sit in the middle because it's raised. I'm going to sit to the offside, trouble is if you stop on that raised bit of tarmac your foot falls into that lower bit where it's worn away and you end up nearly falling off the bike sometimes if it's significantly worn so always stick your bike in the tyre tracks and put your foot on the raised bit of tarmac. Much less chance of the bike tipping over watching that van coming up on the near side. So we've got a street sweeper in the centre of the road here. Would have thought those activities will be stopping soon. But he's right in the centre of the road. I'm going to move on. I'm actually going to move into the cycle lane away from him. That cycle lane is bordered with a, a dotted white line, so we're allowed to do that if we need to. So up ahead now, see the road bending round to the right, and there's a roundabout. I'm taking first exit left of that roundabout towards Manchester. So looking at the roundabout and looking at the route board, I'm taking the information in. I'm trying to look at the flow of traffic on the roundabout, there's not much going around it. I'm going to apply the system, check the mirrors for information, put a left signal on, take a position in the near side lane, on the speed phase now on the brakes, down two gears, and away we go. Changing speed limit, just check the mirrors, build the speed up to 40. And are we going in front or behind this bus? I think we're going to have to go in behind it. I can't really go that much above 40. Give him a quick flash to let him in. A bit more traffic coming up behind us now. Most of the traffic on this road doesn't stick to the 40 limit. We will, because I'm being a good lad for YouTube. But what I want to do is drop back a little bit, because if I keep too close a following position on this bus, I'm going to lose my view in the distance. So actually what I'm going to do is just roll off a couple of mile an hour, let the bus get in the distance a bit more, and then settle on a cruising speed. So in the distance now, the road's sort of dipping away. There's a junction off to the left and a speed camera on the near side, so I can expect some vehicles in front possibly to touch the brakes and panic when they see the speed camera. A mirror check, a few vehicles coming up behind. I'm trying to maintain this slightly longer following position on the bus. If it's a larger vehicle like this, sometimes two seconds is too close. I will look at positioning and following position in another video. Now we can see that in this lane, it's a sort of lane loss. So I'm moving out to lane two to continue A6 through to Manchester. He's ready for the bus to change his mind, although he is on a regular route. I suspect he knows where he's going, but there's always a chance he might just bow out in front of us here at the last minute. So I'm leaving the gap. And eyes in the distance now. The road's dropping down and up the other side of that bridge. Checking the mirrors, not much behind. Been a long time since I've seen the A6 into Manchester as quiet as this on a Wednesday afternoon. And I think it's only going to get quieter as time goes on. 
change your speed limit down to a 30, quick check of the mirrors, but a roll off the gas, let the speed drop down to 30, and just take it down a gear to fifth. And just click the cruise on at 30, just to make sure we're not breaking that. Left shoulder check to see what's coming up off the near side, and in the distance now, the lights are changing to red. I'm going to stay in this lane, as I'm going straight on through. So rolling off the gas now, checking the mirrors as I do so. So there you can see how it's worn on both sides there from the heavy traffic. So what I'm going to do is stick the bike just in the tyre track on the right and put my foot on the raised part of the tarmac and that prevents it from leaning over too far. Learn from my fail, it's nearly caught me out a couple of times that. So when you make these little mistakes, there's a real benefit in learning from them. So I'm checking the mirrors for the lights to change, checking the pedestrians. Oh, there we go. I'm going to check the mirrors now, get across to the right, and we're going to A6 through. So the offside lights for the right turn are changing, our lights are remaining green at the moment, they're all spinning around to the left. And we're continuing straight on. I don't think there's any exemptions for motorcycles with this bus lane, so I'm going to stay out of it. There's a change in speed limit there, down to a 20. Let's be a good lad. So I know that 22 on this speed is an accurate 20 miles an hour, checked it on GPS. So we'll stick with that, looking all around us again, Salford Uni. Normally this will be heaving with students, lots of people moving around. At the moment we've got very little movement, but I'm still wary. The problem with really quiet roads like this is that people are going to take advantage, they will step out, they won't think. They'll make much, many more assumptions that the road is clear and they'll step out, they'll pull out in front of you. So can get a real false sense of security when the roads are quiet like this and think that you've got a nice safe clear run through that you can pick your speed up and do things you wouldn't normally get away with I would really strongly advise against that because everybody else is thinking the same thing so have your wits about you nice and careful especially in city centres like this and with pedestrians as well we never know with pedestrians pedestrians are a real hazard a lot of pedestrians have the hoods up. They have earphones in, they're looking down at the phones. They're not paying attention. Quite a lot of them are drunk on drugs, mental health issues, are deaf, blind. You never know with pedestrians. With car drivers and cyclists, you can make a bit of an assumption. Most of the drivers that you see I've got a license and passed the test. Most of the cyclists, you can watch them and make a little bit of an assumption about the standard of riding. Pedestrians, you can't make those assumptions, you've got to be very careful. Again, quick checking to the junction there, make sure there's nothing coming through. Gonna check the mirrors, go offside, and we're gonna go right here. Say it again, Wednesday afternoon, Manchester City Centre. construction workers, these guys are concerned now about how close they are standing to each other and working with each other. Some sympathy with them. They don't have the option of working from home, these lads. So I'm checking the mirrors. Offside lane, quite central towards Manchester city centre. Looking up in the distance now, lights changing to green. Got pedestrians near side and offside, just a few. A few people milling around. I'm looking for anybody that might encroach into my space. I'm trying to maintain like a safety bubble around myself. I'm trying to maintain an area 
of relative safety around the bike. Not anybody getting too close to us or in danger of getting too close to us. Manchester City Centre, Wednesday afternoon. Pretty amazing, really. Here's a good example of how we can look a long, long way into the distance. Look at the green lights right in the far distance. Got the tram in front of us, and the car tailgating the tram. A bit of a pointless exercise. Somebody stepping out of a car in the mid distance there, opening his door and walking around. Got this person crossing the road here, I'm off the gas. Stay there. And then a mirror check, a car in the distance following us, no great shakes. Gonna stay off the tram lines, always a good idea on a bike, stay off the tram lines. On a bicycle, it's a really good idea because your uh, your wheel could get stuck in that gap. Uh, but they're made, of, um, they're made of metal, so even when they're dry there's not much grip on tram lines. Scanning each way into this junction. No issues, checking the mirrors, right straight ahead. Roll off the gas, checking the mirrors again before we get on the brakes for a stop.